like and share this video. <laughs>
dynamic warm up is important before any bout of exercise. Uh, the purpose of it is to prepare that body for exercise, much like our foam rolling, but this is a, just a little bit more invasive, a little bit more intensive because we want to increase blood flow to those areas uh, to prepare those muscles for that exercise. So today we're going to be going over low body specific dynamic warm ups as it pertains specifically to preparing for the Seacoast Cancer Diet. And right now I have Nick and Cree showing us our, our straight leg kicks. Uh, the purpose of the straight leg kick is to activate the quads as well as those hip flexors here. So as you can see, they're keeping the legs straight out in front of them, keeping those legs nice and straight, nice and slow exercise, kicking those legs as high as they comfortably can while keeping those legs as straight as they possibly can. And after that, the next natural progression of your dynamic warm-up is to bring activate those hamstrings and calves by bringing the heels up to the butt there. So what they're doing is a little faster paced dynamic warm up, but they're a uh, nice even pace, bringing those heels straight up to the butt while trying to keep the upper leg straight. And the purpose of that again is to activate the hamstrings and the calves. The next exercise we're gonna focus on is our lateral band walks. Now, as you can see, Kareem has her band placed right above those knees. And essentially what she's doing is keeping her hips at level and then keeping tension on that band as she squeezes the outside of those hips to bring that foot out. And then she's just taking three steps to one side, three steps to the other while keeping those hips nice and even. The purpose of this warm up is to essentially warm up the outside of those hips here. This is one of the best exercises you can do to increase the blood flow to that area and really activate those muscles. The next exercise we're going to show you guys is our monster walks. Now this is just a little bit different placement of the band. As you can see, Nick has the band down by the ankles here. And essentially what he's trying to do is keep those legs equidistant apart as he uh, keeps the distance, uh, the resistance on the band and takes each individual step here. So I would suggest take five steps forward and then five steps backwards. The five steps forward is going to activate everything in the front of those low body. And then the back step forward are going to get the calves and those hamstrings as well. So Nick is keeping his hips nice and level, activating those hips there, and then pulling through the heel as he moves backwards. And so again, this is our monster band walk. And what you guys can do with this one to kind of switch things up uh, is change the resistance. So you can see he's using a red band there. There's multiple different colors with heavier resistances. If you find that the original band you use is a little too easy. The next exercise we're gonna show you is how to really open up those hips and increase your hip mobility. So Nick here is going to demonstrate how we go about doing that. So as you can see, Nick's pulling up through his knee and trying to open up those hips. So what we always suggest, we want to open up the hips and then activate the interior and posterior parts of those hips. So he's doing five uh, where he's bringing the knee up and to the outside, and then he's doing five where he brings the knee to the outside and bring them in. And if you do need, as we can tell, you're supported by one leg here, so it's going to test our balance a little bit. So if you need to, use assistance of anything else to help support that balance. Um, so that way we can properly uh, focus on the muscles we're trying to activate. Hope you enjoyed our dynamic warm-up video. Please like and share our video. We can't wait to see you at the Seacoast Cancer Club. Welcome to our week 3 video of our Seacoast Cancer 5K progressive video series. Remember each video builds on the last, so if you haven't had the chance to watch our first two of the series, be sure to go back and check them out. If you find them beneficial, please feel free to like and share them as well. This week's video, we will go over very basic programming structure you can utilize when preparing for your 5K. The 5K training schedule incorporates a mix of running, walking, and resting. This combination helps reduce the risk of injury, stress, and fatigue while boosting your enjoyment of physical activity. Remember. You can run or walk slowly to help your body adjust to this 5K training schedule. General guide, runners will be running for 20 seconds and walk for 40 seconds, whereas walkers will just be walking here. So Monday and Tuesday are more intense days. Tuesday and Thursdays are more so active recovery days. We suggest you still engage the same muscles of the body that you did on the previous days, but it's not nearly as intense as the previous days, thus giving your body a chance to recover. 
Friday is an all-out rest day. That is really giving your body a chance to recover since you had four days of activity and consecutive activity. And then also it's preparing for Saturday, where Saturday is really where you're going to kind of simulate your race-like conditions. So essentially what you want to do is kind of push yourself to that race pace that you envision you running on that day of the race. And then Sunday is another kind of either a rest day or an, uh, a walking day, basically an active rest day. As the weeks progress, you'll gradually increase the amount of time running and reduce the amount of time walking. So you can see in the above split, we have run for 20 seconds, walk for 40 seconds. So you'll gradually change those times as those weeks progress as you get closer to race day. For example, week four may look like you're running for 25 seconds and only walking for 30 or 35 seconds, so on and so forth. So progress yourself week after week to make sure you're steadily seeing those improvements. We hope you enjoyed this week's programming for runners video. Next week, we will be going over. Welcome to our week four video, strength training for runners. Uh, today, we're gonna go over the basic exercises that you should do, uh, starting from our very basic exercises and then two progressions to make it a more challenging exercise depending where you are in your uh, level of fitness. Uh, it's important to incorporate strength training in any sort of routine, so that way we're preparing the joints and the muscles for the activity at hand. Strength training exercise is our lunge. So we're gonna start off with just the body weight lunge. Now, as you can see, Kareen's alternating which feet she steps forward with, which we would have you guys do the same. Um, she's taking an exaggerated step forward and creating that nice 90 degree angle right on that forward facing leg there. As she's driving herself back to the starting position, she's pushing right through that heel to get herself back in that position. So this is our beginner exercise. To get to the intermediate variation, we're gonna have Kareen set herself up in a split squat stance here. So a split squat is basically kind of a lunge position, but you're static, you're staying put. So it's more tension on both those quads there, and this we will get a little bit of a burn before you get the end of those 10 reps here. Again, Kareen's creating the 90 degree angle with her forward facing knee, and keeping all the weight over that forward heel as she pushes her body weight up. The final variation of this exercise is the Bulgarian split squat. Now the Bulgarian split squat, the only thing that's different is that hind leg is elevated up on our bench here or any sort of box. Now the box or bench can be any varying height. Start off nice and low. If that's a little easy for you, you can increase the height there. But as you see here, the fundamentals stay the same. She's creating the 90 degree angle with her knee and keeping all the weight over the heel there. Again, be cautious with this exercise. If you have any sort of knee limitations or uh, considerations, I would start off with our very first beginner variation of this exercise here. So again, just remember all the weight over the heels, create that 90 degree and go with that forward facing me. Our third and final exercise we're gonna go over today is the step up. Now the step up here, you can choose varying size boxes here. We're just using a 12 inch box here, but as you can see, uh, Kareen's alternating her step ups here. She's making sure that the whole foot is planted up on top of the box before she pushes through that heel to get her body weight up on top of that box. Now you can just step up on top of the box and place the opposite leg on top of the box so you're standing there. Or you can do this little variation like Green's doing, where she's keeping that opposite leg not doing anything to help increase the um, balance aspect of this exercise. Now, our intermediate variation of this is we're going to pick up our dumbbells here, and we're going to add a little weight to this uh, exercise. So again, she's just alternating her step-ups here, still keeping all the weight over that heel as she powers up through that heel to get her body weight up on top of that box there. The final variation of this exercise is our box jumps. Now, as you can see, Kareen has a nice soft landing with the box jumps, and I want to kind of break down this motion a little bit. So, she's swinging the arms to help assist her body weight up, which is helping develop the momentum there. So, box jumps, keep in mind, this is a most advanced variation of this exercise, and if you have any sort of knee limitations, I wouldn't suggest this variation. I would suggest one of the previous two. Now, you may be wondering when you should perform these exercises. Now, if you refer to our week three video where we went over all of our cardio actual programming throughout the week on when you should be doing your cardio training, these would be performed on those off days. So when you're not doing your intensive cardio days, you'd be performing these strength training exercises. Now, keep in mind the general rule of thumb is three sets of 10 reps of each one of these exercises, and you kind of want those last two reps to be somewhat challenging for you. That way, we're ensuring that we're building muscle and we're still keeping things challenging. Thank you for tuning in for tuning in today and keep tuned for the following videos of our educational series. Please like and share our video. And if you haven't signed up for the Seacoast 5K yet, there's still plenty of time. 
Welcome everyone to our week five video. Today we'll be going over core exercises and our post-exercise static stretching. Now, in case you have missed any of our previous uh, videos, at this point you should be increasing your intensity with your walking program, as well as already incorporating some of those strength training exercises we went over last week into your overall program. Um, today, like I mentioned, we will be focusing on the core exercises of the strength component. Core exercises, the beauty of that is that you can do this four to five times a week throughout the duration of these eight weeks leading up to this. The importance of strengthening the core is tenfold really. It uh, has so many benefits that really to keep the whole body stable as well as to make sure all the other exercises you're doing, you're doing them safely and you're doing them effectively. Now the first core exercise we're going to show you today is the basic plank. Now as you can see, uh, the basic of the plank is that Karina's trying her best to keep that back nice and straight here. She's also engaging the core, you're going to hear me say this a lot throughout this video, engaging the core, you're really squeezing those glutes together and sucking that belly button in towards the spine there. That way we know that whole core is activated. With any of these exercises we're going to show you today, you want to strive for 20 to 30 seconds when you first start off doing three sets of each of those. So this is our normal plank variation. If this is a little challenging for you, we can do a simple regression by bringing it down to the knees. If you bring it down to the knees, again, it's really important just to make sure that back stays nice and flat. Now we're going to go transition to the second exercise that we want to show you today. And this is really going to put the emphasis, change the emphasis, I should say, from the front uh, core here right to those obliques in the form of our side plank. So in the side plank, we want to stack our feet like so. We also want to evenly distribute the body weight throughout that forearm. If you put all the body weight right on that elbow, it's going to create a little discomfort in the shoulder and in the elbow alike. Same thing here, 20 to 30 seconds, around three sets. And remember, we're trying to engage that core and feeling this one in those obliques there. Obviously, make sure that we hit both sides with this one. And as a regression of this screen, I'll have you just drop right down to those knees and then bring those heels back in toward, towards me. Yep, so this is the regression of that exercise. Still working those obliques, but doing it from the knees as opposed to stacking the feet there. Now we're gonna go, so face up here to the final um, one on the floor that we're gonna show you today. And this one is just a simple leg raise. Now, fair warning with this exercise here, sometimes whenever people do core exercises where they're face up, they get discomfort in their low back. Now, how do we address that? You can take the hands, fill in the gap of that low back, right in the uh, lower lumbar spine, and then keep those hands there to fill in that gap. Or pelvic tilt that body so the low back is pressed up against that floor there. So this is the first variation of the exercise. The second variation, as you can see, Kareem has both feet together there. So this is working all the way up and down that abdominal column, but a little bit more challenging in that she has both feet here. So the last variation here, we're gonna hit three different levels with the straight leg raise. So Kareen is going to start at the floor, bring it up to about 30 degrees here, back down. She's going to bring it up a little bit further, 45 degrees, all the way back down. And then finally she's going to bring it all the way up 90 degrees, nice and slow back down. Keeping those legs as straight as she can, feeling all that right in the core. The fourth and final exercise is our Pelov Press. This is one of my personal favorites to kind of work the entirety of the core. Now this one can be performed using a cable machine or using a TheraBand. Now, as you can see, Kareen has, uh, she's starting with tension here. She's laterally to the machine. She's gripping the weight first with her opposite hand. She's got a little cushion in those knees, but she's really locking in those hips, keeping that core as tight as she can. Now, as you can tell, as soon as she pushes those hands forward, the weight's gonna wanna pull her in here. So she's gonna feel this all in throughout the core on the side facing the machine here. Similar to all the exercises, we wanna make sure that we keep things even. With this particular exercise, shoot for 20 to 30 seconds. The variable with this one is the amount of weight we use. So kind of start off a little lighter, that's too easy, increase the weights a little bit. Obviously make sure that when you're doing these on your own, that you turn around and we hit both sides. Remember in week one, the foundations we went over as far as trigger point therapy and self myofascial release techniques. Now this is important when it comes to post-exercise recovery because you can utilize those same techniques in addition to your traditional static stretching. Now static stretching and those foam rolling techniques are beneficial after any bout of exercise to um, A, prevent any sort of injury and also to help uh, keep care of those muscles so we're uh, keeping and maintaining that range of motion. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Be sure to like and share this video. What's going on guys? My name is Nick. I'm a trainer here over at The Works. Um, and welcome to the week six of our video series for our Seco Cancer 5K. Um, today we're going to do some training, uh, uh, strength training that is, uh, to prepare you for the 5K. Um, and we're going to show you 
three variations of uh, three different exercises uh, progressing from easy to hard. And the first exercises we're going to show you uh, is some rotational work, and we have Corinne here to help us out. Um, so the first variation of this exercise, uh, Corinne is going to be perched up on her tailbone with her feet on the floor, rotating from right to left. And as she's rotating, she's using those core muscles and those obliques and the rectus abdominis to help rotate from side to side. And she will, the next variation of the exercise, she will lift her feet up and then again using her obliques and abs to rotate from side to side. And this is the second variation of the exercise. The third and final variation, she will add some weight with a dumbbell or kettlebell, any weight. And then again, rotating back and forth with those feet up as well. And for this, uh, a big cue is really to just keep that pelvis in a posterior pelvic tilt, and that'll help engage the core and the hip flexor muscles. Uh, so our next series of exercises will be different variations of the glute bridge. Um, the glute bridge is a perfect exercise to work the posterior muscles on your legs, uh, consistent of your glutes, hamstrings, and even your calves to a certain extent. So the first one Corinne will demonstrate is just a normal glute bridge. So with your feet planted uh, through the ground uh, and your arms and upper body on the ground as well, she's gonna push up through her heels. And that's an important cue. You don't wanna be pushing up through your toes. You wanna shift the weight through your heels, push up, making sure to go keeping that spine neutral at the top. And at the top, she actually wants to squeeze those glute muscles a little bit, uh, as well as the hip muscles focusing on activating the posterior part of her legs. The second variation, we will be adding a dumbbell to that um, to make it a little more difficult. Uh, you can use a dumbbell, uh, you can use a kettlebell, or you can use an Olympic plate. Um, any sort of uh, will work for this. Uh, and here, you have Corinne holding the weight above her hips, um, and then just continuing to uh, perform a glute bridge, um, same as we did before. Um, and making sure at the top, again, to squeeze and really activate those posterior muscles. The third and final variation uh, will have you actually holding uh, a glute bridge with one leg and using the core muscles to stabilize at the top. So now you have Corinne pushing up through the heels of that leg on the ground and holding at the top, using her core to stabilize. Um, and this is an excellent variation of the glute bridge and it's definitely more advanced than the previous two. So our third and final exercise is the lateral lunge. Uh, the beginning variation of the lateral lunge, Corinne is using one of our loop bands we have here and she is looping it around the top uh, part of her legs right above her knee. And she's lunging side to side making sure to activate those posterior muscles on your glutes and your hamstrings, while also stabilizing your core, have, containing a neutral pelvis, and keeping your arms out in front of her to stabilize. And you can see she's going side to side, pushing out the side of her legs, contracting those IT bands, the vascular, vastus lateralis. And now, if she wants to use an increased intensity, she can actually grab some dumbbells that we have here, or any weight for that matter, and go side to side as well. Now again, the added weight is good for uh, increased intensity by uh, increasing more core engagement, um, more uh, oblique engagement, making the exercise more difficult. And now here, you all have current holding all the different colors of the bands. Um, and generally, the progression for the bands is that the lighter ones are generally a lighter intensity, while the darker colored ones are a greater intensity. So you want to start out at maybe a lighter intensity and feel that out and eventually progress uh, to a darker colored band. Um, for the amount of reps you should do, you should uh, do around 12 to 15 per side. And then once you can do around 15, you're going to want to increase the intensity to a darker colored band. Did you sign up yet for the Seacoast Cancer 5K? Make sure to like and share our video. Thank you. Hello, welcome to week seven of our Seacoast Cancer 5K progressive video series. This week, I'm just gonna be recapping pretty much everything we've gone over of our previous six videos. 
So if you have any questions, I would refer you to those previous videos we've gone over. So at this point, you should really be doing two days of your strength training routine, spaced evenly throughout the week. On those opposite days, you're not doing your strength training, that's when you're increasing your intensity of your walk or your run. Remember, if you're walking the um, 5K, you're going to be doing walking. If you're running it, you're running it, but slowly increasing the intensity week after week. Now, as we get into the week before race, it's really important to listen to your body. If you have any aches and pains, make sure that you're addressing those now, because we don't want to get into the race with those kind of lingering. Also, make sure that you give yourself that very important rest day the day before the race. Stay tuned next week as we will be going over pre and post race nutrition with our registered dietitian on staff. Be sure to like and share us on Facebook.